My friends, the electric Viking coming at you from the land down under. But who cares where I'm from? What matters is the message, hey? EVs, rule, ice is old school. That's where it's at. Now, this list is, to be honest, I'm going to tell you the truth. This list is crap because it's going to change so, so, so quickly. But at least it gives you an idea of where the market in Australia for EVs is at right now. Now, honestly, it's going to change real quick because obviously BYD is bringing out six new EVs within the next six, seven, eight months to the country. Those cars are going to completely change the market. MG, I believe, is going to bring out a hatchback EV as well. That's going to decimate the market. I mean, look what MG is already doing to the small hatch market. It's already destroying Toyota in that area. It's already dominating the sales charts. And MG, I mean, they were a nothing brand only a few years ago. Didn't even exist. Didn't even exist. So some of you are saying, yeah, MG is a great sports car brand. Sure, they were. And then they basically died and were bought by SAIC, Chinese-owned state company. And of course, there's been a huge resurgence since then over the last couple of years, with MG going crazy in the UK and in Australia. Anyway, so different cars are coming out. Obviously, there's also the Tesla Model Y coming to Australia as well. Tesla say that that's going to be here by the end of the year. Guys, honestly, why can Tesla make right-hand drive vehicles for Australia? GM and Ford can't do it. Two of the biggest companies in the world can't do it. I don't get it. Anyway, let's focus on EVs in Australia. Now, there's been a huge take-up of electric vehicles lately in Australia, which is really strange. Amazingly, the Porsche Taycan is selling insanely well, way better than anyone predicted. And the Porsche Taycan is in a segment of vehicles where purchasers have a choice and don't base their purchase decisions on price. That's not their main focus. Their main focus is what type of vehicle do they want. And here in Australia, more people are buying electric Porsche sports cars than petrol Porsche sports cars. In fact, a lot more are. Interesting. Now, over the course of 2020, according to official VFAX data, a total of 1,770 EVs were sold to people and businesses across Australia. Over the first six months of 2021, that figure has been eclipsed by some margin. As of the end of June 2021, a total of 2,217 EVs have been delivered to customers, which represents a year-on-year growth figure of 187%. Electric-only vehicles as a segment are growing faster than plug-in and regular hybrids too, each up 90 and 57% respectively. Now, if you lived in Australia, you would be amazed by these numbers because here in Australia, there are so many bogans who are afraid of the future. They say electric cars will never work. Our country is just too big. They won't work. And yet, what's happening? What's happening? Smart people are putting their money in smart places. Fortunately, there are enough smart people in this country to lead the charge towards EVs. And remember, this is a global phenomenon, guys. This is happening all across the world. France, EVs are going crazy. Germany, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, even the United States, EVs are taking off. Look at sales of EVs in China. They're now 7% of all vehicles, full EVs, I'm not talking about hybrids. If you're talking about hybrids as well, they're more than 10%. EVs are really starting to fire. Now, the noise has finally gotten the interest of Australia's state governments and each has adopted a different strategy. In Australia's two most popular states, New South Wales, has opted for cash incentives and registration concessions, whereas Victoria has adopted a per kilometer road tax. On EVs. It's the only state in the world to have a road tax on EVs. It's insane. More insane by the fact that when I walk around in the streets, in the city areas, even just the metropolitan areas, and I smell the stink of diesel and petrol vehicles burning away their fumes, making me breathe in these toxic aroma, I think, what is wrong with our state government? Anyway, at least they are giving, finally giving a $3,000 incentive to purchases of EVs. So that's a good thing. Now, another one of the reasons why EVs are taking off is the prices are lower, going lower and lower. Now, in China, you can buy an EV for $4,200 US dollars, an actual EV mini car, right? There's going to be an EV mini car on sale for less than $4,000 US dollars within the next couple of months. And BYD make a small to medium sized SUV for just under 11,000 US dollars. 
crazy. Obviously, a lot of these cars are going to make their way up to Australia and going to massively bring down the entry cost to EVs, and you're going to see an enormous spike. This is just the start of a huge global trend. Now, as global manufacturing facilities, some of which are brand new, continue to ramp up production, the extra vehicles produced are finally making their way to markets deemed less profitable or simply less appropriate, like Australia. Well, the thing is, of course, Europe is taking precedence over Australia because we don't find car makers here for not producing green vehicles, whereas Europe does. Now, in 2021, we saw a new low in terms of sale prices with the MG ZS EV launching as Australia's cheapest EV at 44,000 drive away before adjusting upwards by $1,000 recently. But if you're in some states here, you do get that EV rebate. So these are all the cars we have here in Australia right now in July 2021. The BMW i3s costs $72,000 has a range of 260 kilometers and is basically a bucket of crap. For the price, don't even consider it. You'd be crazy to buy that. Moving on. The 2021 updated Nissan Leaf. Prices range from 50,000 Australian dollars to 60,500. Power 110 kilowatt, 320 newton meters for the base model and 160 kilowatt and 340 newton meters for the higher spec model. Range is between 270 to 450 kilometers. The Nissan Leaf, not a bad car. Would I buy one over some of its competitors? No, but it's definitely improved over the last couple of years. The Hyundai Ioniq Electric. Prices start at $49,970 and go all the way up to $54,000. Power comes from a 100 kilowatt, 295 newton meter motor, electric motor, and it comes with a 311 kilometer WLTP range. The Mini Electric looks very cool, also comes with a fairly high price tag for its size. Price, prices start at $55,650 Australian dollars and top out at $60,000. Power comes from a 135 kilowatt, 270 newton meter electric motor and range is 233 kilometers on the WLTP standard. Now this is a very cool car, but it's very expensive. If you compare it to say BYD EA1 Dolphin, which will be out by the end of the year in Australia for around about $30,000, you're looking at double the cost for a car that's clearly not double the car. So hold off on one of these if you're looking for a hatchback. Wait, there'll be also an MG electric hatchback by the end of the year, probably definitely within the first quarter of next year. Just hold on for a little bit if this is your kind of market segment. Medium-sized electric cars. Well, the Tesla Model 3 is actually a bigger car than it looks. It's got a 430-litre boot and actually a, good, a pretty good-sized interior. Now, prices start from $59,900 Australian dollars and go all the way up to $86,000 for the performance model. Now, I personally believe on a simply, purely mathematical, logical basis that the Tesla Model 3 performance is the best performance car you can buy in Australia for the money. I'm talking about bang for your buck. Power and speed versus cost. Now, range goes starts at 450 kilometers and tops out at 580 kilometers for the Tesla Model 3 long range version, and that's on the WLTP standard. Now, in terms of large electric cars, you've got the Porsche Taycan, which I spoke about before. Now, prices range from 156,300 and head all the way up to 345,800. Now, you'd be hard pressed to find a Porsche Taycan in Australia for 156,000. In fact, I think it's virtually impossible. Porsche are not going to sell you the base model without any options packs on it. They just don't do that as a company here in Australia. They have this kind of crazy monopoly here. So you're really probably looking at maybe 175,000 to 350,000 range. Now power starts at 240 kilowatt, 345 newton meters for the base model and goes all the way up to 460 kilowatt and 1050 newton meters for the Porsche Taycan Turbo. Now guys, it's not actually a turbo. Porsche just called it a turbo because they like the word turbo. Honestly, I think the Taycan is a pretty cool car. If I was in the market for a Porsche, I would definitely buy the Taycan versus a petrol-powered Porsche. And they do look pretty cool, but I do have reservations. I believe this is Porsche's first go at it. I think Porsche are going to do a much better job on their revised version 2 model of this car. And if I was in the market for one of these, I would probably wait around 12 months for the new version. Next up, we have the Tesla Model S, which is actually a fair bit bigger on the inside than the Porsche Taycan. If you want a family car, you wouldn't buy a Taycan. 
but you definitely will consider a Model S, which has a very large boot, but it won't be available in Australia for at least another few months as Tesla didn't manufacture any of these for a few months, I think the first quarter of 2021, because they were changing all their tooling over to make the new updated version, which is way better than the old version. Now, prices start from 155000 and top out at 221000 for the Tesla Model S Plaid, which is the fastest car in the world, or the fastest production car in the world. Anyway, it'll do 0 to 60 miles an hour, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 1.99 seconds. That's been tested by Brooks on his YouTube channel. So it's been verified on the street doing those times, do a quarter mile on the street in 9.2 seconds. Absolutely insane. Now range goes from 626 to 652 kilometers on the WLTP standard, but you'll have to wait a few more months for one of these if you want one. It's probably worth the wait. And what about small electric SUVs? Well, in Australia, we now have the Mercedes-Benz EQA 250, which costs $76,800. Sounds like a bit of a bargain. And honestly, if you're in the market for a Mercedes SUV, this would be the one to go for. Power comes from a 140 kilowatt and 375 newton meter electric motor and has a range of 426 kilometers on the WLTP standard. Personally, would I recommend one of these? Absolutely not. I did a 21 car EV test recently. You can check that out in the description below. I'll put a link to it. And in that test, the Mercedes EQA 250 actually came dead last. Why did it come dead last? Well, based on price versus performance, value for money, range, all those other things, it just didn't do that well. So if you're going to get a mid-sized SUV or mid to small sized SUV and you want an electric version, which is the way to go if you don't want massive depreciation, then what you want to do is wait for the Tesla Model Y, which will be here towards the end of this year. Teslas have incredible resale in the country. In fact, Tesla has have incredible resale everywhere, at least the Tesla Model 3 and the Model Y do anyway. Now, there's also the Mazda MX-30 Electric, which costs $65,500, which is insane because in other countries around the world, it costs about 40% less than this. I have no idea why it's so expensive in Australia. Anyway, it is what it is. Power comes from a 107 kilowatt and 271 newton meter electric motor and has a range of 200 kilometers on the WLTP standard. Now, as a really good alternative, much, much better vehicle than the Mazda EV, you can get an MG ZS EV. And these things are selling like crazy in Australia. The MG ZS EV costs 44990 drive away. Now, the other prices of the other vehicles weren't drive away. This one's drive away. Power comes from a 105 kilowatt, 353 newton meter electric motor and has a range of 263 kilometers on the WLTP standard. So it's Australia's cheapest EV and it's a pretty good size. It's a mid-size SUV. Really good car. You can see why so many people are buying these. Then you've got the Hyundai Kona Electric. Prices start from 62,000 and top out at 66,000. Power comes from 150 kilowatt, 395 newton meter electric motor and it has a range of 484 kilometers on the WLTP standard. So if you want a longer range SUV, this would be the one to go for. But remember, you are paying about $20,000 more than the MG ZS EV, but you do get around about 200 kilometers more range. Now, slightly bigger SUVs you can get, well, you can get the 2021 Mercedes-Benz EQC, which costs between $140,000 to $146,000. Bit of a ripoff, I think. But anyway, power is 300 kilowatt and 760 newton meters. And the range is 353 kilometers on the WLTP standard. Now, if you want something a bit bigger, you can go for the 2021 Audi e-tron. Prices start at 136,000 and top out at 156,000. And power is 230 kilowatt and 540 newton meters. And for the higher spec model, 300 kilowatt and 664 newton meters. Ranges vary. The base model comes with 300 kilometers of range and the top model comes with 400 kilometers of range. The fastest SUV you can buy, period, in the world and in Australia will be the 2021 Tesla Model X. And hopefully it's available towards the end of this year. But obviously Tesla has huge demand for this car. It's a new model. So it may not come out in Australia this year. 
Prices range from $180,000 and top out at $205,000 for the Tesla Model X Plaid. Power ranges between 400 kilowatt and 760 kilowatt for the Plaid, and range is 547 to 580 kilometers on the WLTP standard. Personally, I'm a big fan of the new Tesla Model X and Model S compared to the old model. I think the interior looks way, way better. And, well, the specs are way better. Look at the performance of these things. They're insane. They're beating supercars easily. Unbelievable. Now, another car you can buy, which isn't an SUV, isn't a hatch, isn't a... I don't actually know what it is, but I quite like the look of it. The 2021 Jaguar I-Pace. Prices start at $127,000 and top out at $151,000. And power comes from a 294 kilowatt and 700 newton meter electric motor. It has a 470 kilometer range on the WLTP standard and looks pretty good in this red color you can see here. And guys, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of choice right now in Australia. But give it 12 months and there'll be a heck of a lot more choice here in Australia. A lot more to choose from. Prices will continue to come down. In fact, I think in many cases, you're going to see EVs cheaper than their petrol counterparts in Australia. For example, BYD has already been able to reduce the cost of their batteries at a cost per kilowatt hour, now under 100 US dollars, now at about $95 per kilowatt hour. And that is a point at which EVs can actually become cheaper than petrol vehicles. So if you're patient, you wait a little bit, you'll be able to get an amazing vehicle at, real, well, really, what would have been seen a few years ago as an incredible price. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.